Thank you, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. Delighted to meet you all here again in this beautiful, sunny building and to everyone who's joining us online as well. It's great to see the amount of interest that we have. So I'm Jennifer Cleary. I'm the head of international at the Irish Universities Association. So proud that Leo remembered me a long time ago. You came into the IUA um, when we set up the Your Access Research and Mobility Office, and I'll, I'll talk about that shortly as well, which is also a really good service that the IUA run on behalf of the sector. So as I said, um, I work in the Irish University Association. I work with all of the global international offices across the eight universities. And of course, we also deal a lot with our stakeholders with Enterprise Ireland, Education in Ireland, IDA, and all of the government departments. And the IUA itself, as you can see, that's our, of course, you all know where our universities are and all are represented today, which is great. You'll get a chance to, to meet with them later on today, our careers, careers personnel and, and industry engagement officers. But across the um, eight universities, our work spreads across access, governance, quality, diversity, inclusion, civic community engagement, learning and teaching, research, innovation, sustainability, which is key, but also internationalization. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. And we also lead many sectoral projects. We're involved in many projects, including uh, micro-credentials, which I'm delighted David is going to talk to you about this afternoon. So there's a wonderful program ahead, and it's going to showcase the wonderful resources that the universities have in place to provide graduate skills and the talent pipeline and the myriad of ways in which universities interact with enterprise. But I'd just like to set the scene by sharing numbers of international students that we have in Ireland and how they will feed into the overall graduate numbers and the discussions that we're having today. So we approximately have 250,000 students in Ireland and of that 205,000 are undergraduates and 45,000 are postgraduates. So that would be masters, PhD, postdocs. And we really do attract the brightest and most qualified uh, students to our third level institutions and recent um, quality rankings and markings, which are very important for us show that Ireland is actually uh, the, I, the eight universities that Ireland represent are in the top 1% one, 1 of universities in the world. That's a fantastic, phenomenal number. And of our numbers, uh, figures show that Irish universities alone attract about 76% of the international students that come here. Um, and that, in terms, is about 16,000 of the 22,000 international students that we have. And we attract lots and lots of international students. Um, they come here because of the high quality of education, but those in particular, especially those postgraduate students who are looking at masters and postdocs come here because of the, uh, the access to work experience, the post study work experience, the opportunities that they have. And that is what they look for. So not alone by the high quality of education, but a number of our students in, are coming here. Uh, uh, the large number of our postgraduates would be in the age of 24 to 25. So they're not just coming here and starting off in the in the university. They're coming here. Their families are investing in them to move here, do a master's. They spend a, we know a lot of money to come here to Ireland, but a lot of the reason to do that is because they know they have access to post study work opportunities and placements while they're also in our colleges. So the areas that a lot of them will be in, I mean, a quarter would be the health and welfare, business administration law. We've got ICT, arts, humanities, social sciences across the board. But even talking to Vish today is going to join us in the panel discussion. A lot of his friends and a lot of students that he speak to come here because of the opportunities in digital, ICT, a lot of opportunities that they wouldn't obviously access at home. And that's really important. So I, in the few minutes that I have left, I just want to show you and try and demystify um, the hiring opportunities that you have as a company. Because a lot of companies think that it, it is a bureaucratic process. It can be timely, but actually, if you think about it, I want to just go through why it is important for you to ensure that it's actually something that you actually can navigate with hiring international graduates. Our students come here, and just so you know, a lot of them, as I said, they've invested in their career, they've invested in coming to Ireland. So they're here, they have experienced approximately three to five years already working in another company. There's a great diversity cross culture that enriches, enriches your organization, which they've also brought from the campus. Um, and they can access what's called 
when they get here, they can access a student visa, so they can work for up to 20 hours while they're in college, while they're in the, during the academic term. And then outside of that, during summer periods and Christmas, they can work um, 40 hours a week. So just to be aware of that, and it's a really good opportunity to ensure for a lot of students to actually get into your companies and do placements while they're here. But after the student visa, and when they've graduated, and this is what I want to mainly talk about to you today, it's called the Graduate Visa Scheme, or it could be known as the 1G. Every non-EU student that comes to Ireland, and once they graduate and they have their exam results, are eligible for a graduate visa. That graduate visa allows them to go into your company, work in your company in whatever area it is, for at least one year for undergraduates, so those who've got their degree. Those who actually have a master's or a postdoc or above can extend that you know, one year to two years. And after that, and during that time, they will in ensure that they you want to keep them on, that they're a really valuable asset to your company. That is when you have to talk to them about working into a, a longer term work permission. And that's where there's different areas of general work permits, or they may actually be somebody who fits the critical skills criteria, um, which is all the information I have on my slides for you today. And then lastly, I want to just say to you that the hosting agreement I mentioned at the start, any company that actually has research is a research active organization and applies to the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Employment, you can actually request to issue hosting agreements, which is if you can prove that the position is a research active position, you can um, apply for a hosting agreement on behalf of your researcher and they can bring their families with them as well. So there's a myriad, there's a number, lots of lots of different ways in which you can hire international students. As I said already, it's a really important resource. It's not a huge, it's not a huge number. So it's not taking away, as, as some companies think, the jobs from Irish nationals or those in Europe who, who may not avail because it's the critical skills, they can add to that. They bring a lot of value to your company. And I've just created at the end of this slide, a lot of useful links for you. But what I would say to you, apart from all the links, you're going to engage with your university is the first step. Your university, your careers offices, all that resource that's in place, they know they'll be able to help you navigate through those recruitment processes, all the information that's there. IUA here, I have a link there to the international section for employers as well. All that information is there for you. And I'm going to leave it at that, I think. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. yeah. thanks. Okay, um, thanks very much for that, Jennifer. Uh, we're now going to dig a little bit deeper into this subject. So we're joined by uh, Giles O'Neill. He's Director of Education in Ireland at EI. Uh, Vish Gain, who is a former Master's in Journalism student at DCU, now a journalist with uh, Silicon Republic. And Dr. Declan Jordan, who's Vice Dean for Graduate Studies at the UCC uh, Business School. Uh, for those in the room, just raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. For those watching online, you're very welcome to put through your questions through the Q&A function and we'll get to as many of them as we can uh, during this session. Uh, Giles, maybe you might, um, uh, we might start with you. If you could tell me a little bit about your role in um, uh, in uh, education in Ireland. What what is what is education in Ireland and what are you hoping to do? Of course. Is the mic working okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So um, I work... You know, I've probably got the best job <laughs> because I work in Enterprise Ireland and 15 years ago, the Ministry of Education at the time um, wanted to try and find a way of helping Irish universities and colleges internationalize. And they looked across all the state agencies and they said, well, is Enterprise Ireland helping Irish businesses do things on an international stage. Could you help the Irish universities on their internationalization journeys? And we said, yes, of course we will. And that was 15 years ago. So I work in Enterprise Ireland, and we've got 40 offices all over the world that the universities can access and use to help them achieve their goals. But we developed a brand, right? And education in Ireland is that brand. And it is owned by the Department of Further Higher Ed Research Innovation Science. Um, and we have the mandate from them to work hand in glove with Irish universities and colleges to help them internationalize. I'm going to explain what internationalize means in a second, all over the world. And so um, you're looking to attract uh, foreign students to come study in Ireland. Talk to me about how focused that is, what your, what your approach is. It's become a lot more focused over the last number of years because um, through the use of digital um, technologies, 
we are quite it's quite easy to target um certain groups of students in different parts of the world even certain disciplines of students and schools that they're coming through um and building up a database of potential international students who have expressed an interest in studying internationally and possibly in an english-speaking country how do you find them uh, digital what you mean they tweet about it <laughs> so there's a lot of um platforms and databases across the world right that students go in and they search right right um and that data is captured okay. we work with people in different parts of the world to use that data as an example we might use it in india in a particular metro city in india and we look at certain disciplines within that metro city wow. people who are searching for opportunities to study abroad. okay so it's really targeted it's quite targeted yeah and so you have people who are interested in coming you know they're in universities that are creating good graduates as well what's the next step the next step is 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 running campaigns positioning ireland as this world-class study destination and everything that goes along with that and jen has covered it off quite well in terms of how we position ourselves and then it's a case of, of trying to message them, trying to touch them, trying to get them to come and meet some of our universities in country. That's primarily the first step. And once that kicks off, discussions start happening and the universities and the international teams kick in and they start trying to position themselves as the place for that student to come and study. Right. So um, what about the support then for SMEs? So they're in university now, they're doing great. What support do EI give to SMEs? to start that recruiting process okay that's further down the pipeline and i put my enterprise ireland hat on so not only and leo has covered this off really well in terms of what we're really trying to do is to get really skilled young curious people into smes you know that's the overriding objective we also provide an incentive to do that so you know we have a a graduate program that enterprise ireland clients and local enterprise office clients um, can take part on um, you can get funding for up to two years for a graduate to come and be employed by your company um, you can get up to three of them um, over um, the two-year period and in terms of if there's a particular um, role within a company that has a specific language requirement you can get additional support for that right so and what does that support look like um, the grad program is 50 percent okay. maximum 30,000 okay over two years and um the where there's a language um need it goes up to 70 percent funding wow so it's quite attractive and i hope you all know about this do you <laughs> that's great and um in terms of uh the universities how do you interface with them well on the international state it's, it's all about us and the international teams working together hand in glove yeah and trying to position Ireland as the place to come and right. study once the international students are in person mentioned this you know the, all the international students are either arriving or coming back into second third fourth year that's when the universities kick in and the career teams and the universities see the other part of this and one of the reasons that international students come to Ireland is Ireland has got better and better and better at having practical work experience built in Mm. to the courses yeah and look at the end of the day these are young people who want the best opportunities for their lives and their families so anything that gives them that little bit of an edge yeah um because they've already started down that journey of course yes. by, by moving country which is which is a big thing so you know that that sort of person has that sort of mentality already yeah <laughs> um Declan, uh, talk to me a little bit about um ucc um your role and how you have been so successful in attracting foreign students to come study in, in your school. Um, thanks, John. So, yeah, I, I'm the Vice Dean for Graduate Studies in Cork University Business School. Um, and I have to say first, for, for maybe a long-winded answer, is it's great to be back in my native place. I'm a Limerick man uh, and a graduate of UL. It struck me, I haven't been in this building before. The library 30 years ago was over in the main building. And coming in here, it strikes me how differently we learn now um, and how we need to offer different learning experiences to our students and different ways of engaging and engaging them with the world in practice um, than, than we would have done would have done before, even though UL was ahead of the curve at that stage as well, I think, in terms of work experience. I did two co-ops um, and that was they were one of the first on the blocks on that. And that kind of links into to, to the kind of thing things that we need to do to attract international students. Um, 
So within the business school, we have, uh, it's now uh, nearly two thirds, one third international uh, to EU um, across our, our uh, postgraduate taught programs. We have some programs where we have over 90% international students, particularly in the areas around business innovation systems, business analytics. Um, and every year it's, we start at zero again. It's very different to the experience we have at undergraduate level, where to the CAO, we're, we're, we're effectively turning students away, right? Yeah. Uh, to the CAO. Um, and whereas at postgrad, it's we're back to zero every year. Um, and it, it, we, it's based on our reputation. It's based on providing a learning experience that students uh, want, that students benefit from, that they get um, a good learning experience engaged with business. I'm always struck by the, the quality of the international students that come. I mean, when you think about coming halfway across the world, these are exactly the type of graduates that are dem they're demonstrating by what they're doing, yeah. their initiative, their courage, um, their desire to, to, to enhance their life, to improve their, improve their lives, to get new experiences. So they're, they're like the walking embodiment, of, for me, yeah. of the type of, of graduate we want to, we want to produce. Um, so every year, though, we've got to rely on positive reputation going back into the market again. If we don't provide the types of services um, that these international students want, if we don't get them good quality jobs and we don't engage them with business, very quickly we'll find that our model isn't sustainable. Mm. Um, very quickly, we'll we'll get the reputation. You know, our, our reputation will be damaged in that international market. So um, I think it's 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 really about providing the types of programs that businesses and graduates want, doing it consistently and being reactive to their to their their demands. But you you would imagine lots of universities are trying to do that. Yeah. I guess you've been quite successful. What is it do you think that sets your your pitch or your offering apart from? other universities, perhaps in other countries that aren't as successful in attracting that international talent? Well, I think, well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure we can say that UCC is more successful uh, than the others, I think. But your school has pretty... Well, yeah, well I think we're doing well and we're yeah. growing all of, all of the time, but I mean, across the, the sector is growing all of the time, all, all of the time as well. Um, but, but it, you know, the, the, the yeah, I'm an economist, right? So I, 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 mean, I always think of things from an economic perspective, <laughs> you know, in terms of like co-op, this is phrase of co-opetition. I mean, we, we, we cooperate with education in Ireland to sell Ireland as a destination. And Ireland, once you get over the difficulty of uh, informing many students where Ireland is, right? Where, that's where we begin a lot of the time. Um, but once they engage with Ireland and they see what it is that Ireland offers, um, then you have the competition after that cooperation initially yeah. of trying to say, well, Cork, this is what Cork has, uh, this is what Limerick has, this is what uh, Dublin has in Galway and Maynooth and so on. Uh, Fish, I wanted to um, hear from you and your experience because you um, came to Ireland to study and are now working uh, at Silicon Republic. Tell me a little bit about your experience, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, just to preface with anything I say, I mean, I will be speaking about myself, but as the, the international student on the panel, I sort of don't want to pretend to represent 22,000 people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a bit like when I'm asked about India and suddenly I start talking and I'm representing 1.4 billion people. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, personally, my experience was, um, um, did you say, was it after I finished my degree or why I came here? The stay back visa, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so one of the reasons why I came here specifically was the ability to stay back um, at the time when I was looking in 2019 for universities abroad, it was if you're if you're coming to an English speaking country in Europe, it's either the UK or Ireland. And at the time Brexit was going on in the UK, not the best time to go there. I know at the time that they they had a very short stay back period and it was very volatile, whereas Ireland stood out as this sort of bastion of stability at the time. You know, there's there's no no problems with respect to still being in the EU going on. And it was a very welcoming place for a lot of international students. Um, there were lots of, I'm from India, so a lot of people um, who had my seniors or people who'd uh, been to Irish universities before, they had largely positive feedback. Um, so that's, that's, and the feedback was that you can stay here for two years after you finish your degree and then um, get a job. So that's one of the biggest things that I'd say across the board for a lot of countries, students coming in, you know, you don't just want to invest so much money and come into university and then have to leave immediately. So that's a big selling point. Um, so I came here and then when I finished my degree, 
Um, there's an initial sort of apprehension. I know that I have a two year stay back, but I also need to get a job that I know will sponsor me beyond the two years should I decide to stay after two years. And I was in journalism, which is not one of the, it's not really, I mean, there aren't hundreds of journalism jobs every day, unlike, you know, the, the tech jobs. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, I was very keen on making sure that I got into a company that I knew in the long run would be able to eventually um, want me want me on, something that I can provide value to, but someone who can also um, sort of keep me on as well. Um, and I graduated in 2020, which was a fantastic year for employment. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so I was very I was very grateful that I was able to join Silicon Republic at the time. Um, I continued on my 1G visa at the time because there's no rush. There's two years yeah. on it. So I, I was on the 1G and then my plan was I'll work there for a year because my first contract was for a year. I'll work there for a year and within the year, I'll try and sort of prove myself as invaluable to the company so that when I have a conversation after my one year at the company, I can then bring up the fact that in a year's time, if you still want me to be on, um, you'd have to help me out with, you know, kind of sponsoring my, my visa. And there's a little bit of work involved in that, although retrospectively, um, I would say it was quite a fairly easy process compared to what I, you know, what I thought it might be. Mm -hmm. um, and so at my one year meeting, I had a conversation with my editor and I got a good performance review and I said, well, okay, and so for the next year, what do you want, Vish? And I said, well, not really much, except that in a year's time, if you could still keep me on, um, that might be, that, that'll be great. Um, and and we're a small company at Silicon Republic. We're not, we're not Google and Facebook and we're not churning out lots of um, sponsorships every year, you know, so it, it, it was something that they hadn't, they'd done it once before at Silicon Republic, but that was a critical skills visa. Um, that's usually slightly faster because it's a tech, um, international job, uh, in tech job for an international student, whereas I got the general employment work permit, which is non-tech jobs, which, you know, there's not a huge uh, deficit of in Ireland. Um, and yeah, and we, we, we my, my CEO and my editor got together and they started figuring out what needs to be done. And within a month's time, I was put on the, the, the work permit. So very grateful about that. Phenomenal. Um, is that a, a common experience um, from your um, working, Jennifer, in the, in this area? Does do graduates go on to do well in their jobs and often end up um, wanting and, and being kept on? Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, there's a high percentage. Even studies have shown that um, most of our um, international postgraduate students are in jobs within nine months of graduation, which is really good, and that's that's ahead of. Um, uh, non-international or non-international students, which is to say, I mean, there are caveats with it. There are there are concerns that companies come. I mean, I had it myself in my previous role in a software localization company, with the HR, the, the the bureaucracy around it. And yes, the, you do have to, I think for a lot, most of the students that do go into these jobs or graduates that go into these jobs, the companies really see the value and do want to stay. So there is a bit of that work. There's a lot of information there available. Um, and but just don't don't forget, you know, you're you're getting a student, a graduate that's going to come to you with that one G permission, that postgraduate permission. They're there for the year. You've plenty of time then to look through and navigate with the work permits and all of that as well, because I think it is high success rate that companies do invest, and you want to invest in your in your graduate too. They're not just coming there to do, you know, you want to be able to invest in their development. Um, so yeah, it's two way, it's two way positive. Yeah, yeah, it's just just. There's a, there's a beautiful circle in all of this, right? So international students wanting to come and study in an English speaking environment, you know, develop that edge and um, get a job, progress. And then we take them and say, would you go and tell your friends about this? Hmm. And we produce these short videos and we get people, we've actually had people from Ireland come to India with us because you know, when you're talking to young Indian kids or young Chinese kids, they don't want to talk to a middle-aged Irish man, right? They would much rather to talk to, you know, someone like Vish or, or someone like that who's had the experience, has actually been there and done it mm. and been through it. Because it gives that sort of confidence to the whole process. Is, is a, a, a graduate um, who's gone, who's come from another country to study here, are they... Um, usually only of, uh, of interest for SMEs who are exporting or doing uh, or working in international markets? Oh, no, no. I mean, any company that is developing products and services and trying to develop an edge, um, that sort of uh, talent is, is it's, it's not in any way sort of export only 
Yeah. This is about building a strong business. And whether that's domestically focused or export focused, that's very good. Yeah. That is right, yeah. I just could yeah, say, go ahead. Um, before you, you say, Jack, uh, if we have questions uh, from home, please do uh, uh, ask on the Q&A function. And if anyone has a question in the room, please do raise your hand. We'll get to some of them shortly. Well, I think Charles is right in that, that it's not just on um, exporting or internationally focused SMEs, but I, my, my original research area was in relation to business innovation and uh, and the innovation system and we're talking to universities about uh, business innovation and so on. When I talked to SMEs particularly, one of the big problems they had was, well, who do I, who do I talk to? Where do I go? Yeah. Like a university is such a big bureaucratic organization, um, tell us about it, um, that where do I, where do I start in the journey? Um, and it's the same, I think, in relation to hiring graduates and international students. But my, my advice in relation to that is just ring somebody, right? Ring, um, go go on and look at a program like, you know, if you're interested in business and someone from business analytics background, look for somebody from business analytics, you look at the Cubs website or the UC website, you'll see there's a program director there, ring the program director because they need businesses big time yeah for their graduates but not even just for their graduates there's also work placement which for me is a uh, you know what i hear is a, is a great lower risk opportunity of checking out you know the talent that's there checking out the person if it if it doesn't work out you know it's not such a big um, yeah. uh, investment and if it does work out You've already got an in. You've got a great uh, person there to hire uh, when they do when they do graduate. There's also things that we work on, uh, things like uh, business-based um, projects. So if you have a, a problem you're trying to solve, you know you can contact somebody on a, a postgrad taught program. They do a, a dissertation or a project at the end. Why not work on your project? Uh, we have a program that with Talanta that, that works on on that types those types of things. Any questions from the room? Raise your hands now. We're running out of time with this panel. Um, Deccan, just on that, what should SMEs do to attract these graduates uh, and these students that have come here to, to work? Well, the, the, it is, the, the graduates are anxious to work with stay back visa, to, to stay in Ireland, um, more or less. That's, that's my, my my experience is that they, they nearly all want to stay in Ireland um, after they graduate to gain experience. Um, so. It's about putting your business in front of them. Um, it, it, it isn't quite, I think, um, as much of a graduate's market as it might be in, in relation to Irish graduates. Um, you will find very good quality um, graduates that come out and, and talented uh, people that will come out of the, those postgraduate programs. But it's about giving them the opportunity, I think. Okay. To, to look at your business as, as an option. I might, I might ask you one yeah. more like question, yeah. Vishal. Do you have a question from Thor? Thanks, Jonathan. Yes, we do. We have a question from online uh, from Patrick Matthews, which, which says, in terms of longevity and offering careers to the international students, what are the options following the initial general work permit or critical skills visa? Would it be repetition of the same visa? Uh, Jennifer? Yeah, um, I, I think... There's a, the, with the work permits, and I'll, I might even ask if someone expert in the room, on the critical skills, they are for a certain duration. And then a lot of those who wish to stay on long term can actually apply for a long term residency. So, for example, with the hosting agreement scheme, um, I think it's after four years or five years, you can actually apply for long term residency if you wish to stay in Ireland. I think it's similar in critical skills, but please don't quote me on it. Um, is there somebody in the audience that could clarify that part? Yes. Thanks. Uh, it's two years, so you have to fill the full time for the two years. I first stamp for visa. So that's the process in terms of residency and critical skills list. It's also an approved list that's printed on the department's website um, and the criteria on that. But I'm happy to help or talk to anybody at the break. Yeah, if, 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 we, if we can um, just take a note of, uh, is it Patrick who um, asked the question? Yeah, if we can take a note of that, um, Helen, if you might uh, be able to connect with them, that'd be great. We've been talking about this process and it can sound quite burdensome, Vish, but how is your experience of going through this and how is your experience going from coming to Ireland, uh, uh, graduating and finding now uh, a, 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 a very Im impressive job here in Ireland? How has it been? Uh, it was largely positive, I'd say. Um, I, I think any international student who comes here, I mean, as I said before, you kind of want to stay back and 
there is an apprehension, but also now that it's not, you know, we're not in the, in, in the throngs of COVID anymore and um, we, there are jobs available, there will be a competition to get these students as well. Mm. I think um, from, S from an SME perspective, especially, um, a lot of the jobs might be tech related jobs and there are Ireland, especially like in a city like Dublin, it's, there's lots of um, tech companies headquarters, headquartered in, in, in Dublin and other cities as well, which means that they'd be looking for A, the big money, but also be the kind of stability that you'd get in a big company. Yeah. So that's what SMEs are competing with. There are a lot of tech jobs out there. There are new headquarters coming in. Just the other day, OpenAI, the creator of ChatGPT, started yeah. its own office in Dublin, and I had to write a story about that. But I was just thinking, when they start growing, there's going to be so many more AI roles, and a lot of the kid, a lot of the students who study AI at Irish universities would be also, you know, I'd say I don't know the data, but a lot, a lot of them would be international students as well. Um, and so there's opportunities out there, but SMEs will really have to sort of stand out yeah. compared to the bigger companies. And I think one of the ways in which that can be done is um, by sort of telling by telling them that you can, there's more scope for learning when you're mm. a part of a smaller company. I think Leo touched on this initially as yeah. well, but on, in my experience as well, I think I'd much rather work for a smaller company where I have more roles that I can take on. Um, as a young person, you kind of don't want to get into a fast track, streamlined sort of journey like you know if you were in a google or or, or or meta or something but you're working in a smaller company where you can actually you can actually see the ceo on a, on, on you know once a month at least and you're you're part of what's going on you can see the impact you're having as well um so so that's that's been my experience as well i think um all the way from coming in and studying in ireland i was working with the iua at the time as a part-time um international intern um and then moving on to Silicon Valley, it's largely been smaller spaces where I can see the impact that my my daily work is having. I think that's one of the selling points as well yeah. um, for a lot of international students. And so that's one way that when you're trying to get international students to work for you, that's one way to uh, sort of lay down your argument. Bish, thank you very much. Thank you very much to our panel. Round of applause for them, please. Um, thanks, guys. Uh, so. In the next section, we're going to focus on SME engagement, connecting into the university system, and how companies can attract uh, attract graduates and intern uh, talent. Um, we're going to hear from Dr. Patrice Toomey and uh, Caroline Pierce, 